Okay, grads. Caps thrown, diplomas in hand, now what? Time to trade those dorm room posters for some real-life wall art because homeownership is calling. It's the ultimate adulting achievement, besides, you know, doing your taxes and stuff. But hold up, before you start binge-watching HGTV and house hunting like a pro, let's talk mortgages. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Think of it like this, a mortgage is your golden ticket to owning a piece of the pie, a place to call your very own. Imagine this, movie nights in your living room, epic parties in your backyard, because you'll finally have a backyard, and no more landlords telling you what you can and can't do. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Well, get ready to make that dream a reality because we're about to break down the mortgage maze and set you on the path to homeownership success. Let's do this. Okay, let's get down to business. Today, we're diving into a topic that's crucial for anyone looking to buy a home. What exactly is a mortgage, you ask? It's a term you hear all the time, but what does it really mean? In a nutshell, it's a loan you get from a lender, like a bank or credit union, to buy a house. This loan is specifically designed for real estate purchases. You pay it back over time, usually 15 or 30 years with interest. This means you'll be making monthly payments for quite a while. Think of it like renting, but instead of paying your landlord, you're paying off your very own castle. It's an investment in your future. Now here's the deal. Mortgages come with some fancy terms like principal, interest, and down payment. These terms might seem confusing at first, but they're essential to understand. Don't worry, we'll break it all down for you. Understanding these terms will make the whole process much easier. Principal is the amount you borrow. It's the base amount of your loan, excluding any interest or fees. Interest is the fee you pay for borrowing that money. It's essentially the cost of having the loan, and the down payment is your initial contribution. This is the money you pay upfront when you purchase the home. The bigger your down payment, the smaller your loan and monthly payments will be. This can save you a lot of money in the long run. It's like putting a bigger deposit on that awesome apartment you've been eyeing. Less to pay up front means more cash for pizza delivery, right? Plus, it gives you more financial flexibility. So, now that you've got the mortgage basics down, let's dive into how to actually qualify for one. This involves understanding your credit score, income, and other financial factors. Get ready for some financial fitness tips. We'll guide you through the steps to ensure you're in the best shape to secure that mortgage and buy your dream home. All right, let's talk money, honey. Whether you're a first-time homebuyer or looking to refinance, understanding your finances is key. Lenders want to make sure you're good for the dough, and that means proving you can handle those monthly mortgage payments. It's not just about having the cash up front, it's about showing you can sustain it. They'll look at your income, employment history, and something called your debt-to-income ratio, DTI. This helps them gauge your financial health and stability. DTI is basically a fancy way of saying how much of your income goes towards debt payments each month. It's a crucial metric that lenders use to assess your ability to manage additional debt. The lower your DTI, the better. Think of it like this. The less debt you have, the more money you have left over for fun stuff. And mortgage payments, of course. A low DTI shows that you have a good balance between your income and your debt. Here's the thing. Lenders typically like to see a DTI of 40% or lower. This means that less than half of your income should be going towards debt payments. So, if you're raking in $5,000 a month, your total debt payments, including your potential mortgage, shouldn't exceed $2,000. This ensures you have enough left over for other expenses and emergencies. Don't worry, we'll talk more about managing your debt and boosting that DPI later on. There are strategies and tips that can help you improve your financial standing. For now, just remember that lenders want to see a solid track record of responsible money management. This means paying your bills on time, keeping your debt levels low, and showing that you can handle your finances responsibly over the long term. Remember all those late credit card payments from your college days? You might have thought they were just minor slip-ups, but they can have lasting effects. Yeah, those might come back to haunt you. It's not just about the late fees, it's about how those late payments impact your credit score. Your credit score is like your financial report card, and lenders use it to assess your credit worthiness. It's a three-digit number that can make or break your financial future. A higher credit score means you're a lower risk, which translates to better interest rates and loan terms. This can save you thousands of dollars over the life of a loan. Think of it like this. 
The better your grades were in school, the more likely you were to get into that awesome college, right? Same goes for mortgages and other loans. A good credit score opens doors. So, how do you boost your credit score? It's not as daunting as it seems. Pay your bills on time, keep your credit card balances low, and avoid opening too many new accounts at once. Consistency is key, and for all those recent grads out there, building a positive credit history is key. Start early and be diligent. Start with a secured credit card or become an authorized user on a parent's account. These are great ways to build credit without taking on too much risk. Trust me, a little credit care now will go a long way when it's time to buy your dream home. Your future self will thank you for the effort you put in today. Regularly check your credit report for errors and dispute any inaccuracies. Staying on top of your credit can prevent unpleasant surprises. Remember, good credit isn't just about loans and interest rates, it's about peace of mind and financial freedom. So, keep it real and take control of your credit today. Okay, let's talk savings. Remember that down payment we mentioned earlier? Yeah, that's where your savings come in. The more you can put down up front, the less you'll have to borrow and pay interest on. Now we get it, saving money can be tough, especially when you're just starting out and adulting is hitting you from all angles. But trust us, it's worth it. Start by creating a budget and tracking your spending. Look for areas where you can cut back, goodbye daily lattes, hello homemade coffee. Consider setting up automatic transfers to your savings account each month, even small amounts add up over time. And don't forget about those graduation checks from your grandma. Stash them away in a high-yield savings account and watch your down payment grow. Remember, every little bit counts when you're building your mortgage foundation. Congratulations, you've made it this far. You understand the basics of mortgages, you're on top of your finances, and you're ready to start house hunting. But before you fall in love with a charming bungalow or a sleek condo, there's one more thing to consider. The type of mortgage. That's right, mortgages come in different shapes and sizes, each with its own set of pros and cons. It's like choosing a streaming service. You want the one that best fits your needs and preferences. Do you crave the predictability of a fixed monthly payment? Or are you comfortable with a little bit of risk for the chance to snag a lower interest rate? Don't worry, we're here to break down the most common types of mortgages so you can find your perfect match. Let's dive in. Let's start with the classic, the fixed rate mortgage. As the name suggests, this type of mortgage comes with an interest rate that stays the same for the entire life of the loan. That means your monthly principal and interest payments will never change, no matter what happens with the market. Think of it like your favorite comfort food, familiar, reliable, and always there for you. Fixed rate mortgages are great for first-time home buyers who crave predictability and want to lock in a low rate for the long haul. Of course, there's a slight trade-off. Fixed rate mortgages typically come with higher interest rates than adjustable rate mortgages, more on those later. But hey, peace of mind has its price, right? Now for those who like to live on the edge, financially speaking of course there's the adjustable rate mortgage, or ARM. Unlike its fixed rate cousin, the ARM comes with an interest rate that can change over time. Picture a roller coaster. You might start off with a low introductory rate, but it can go up or down based on market conditions. Sounds risky? It can be. But ARMS also offer the potential for lower initial rates, which can save you money in the short term. They're a good option for borrowers who plan to move or refinance before the rate adjusts, or those who are comfortable with a little bit of uncertainty. Just make sure you understand the terms of the ARM and are prepared for potential rate hikes down the road. Hold up grads! Did you know the government wants to help you buy a home? That's right, there are special loan programs designed specifically for first-time home buyers, veterans, and those with low to moderate incomes. These government-backed loans like FHA loans and VA loans often come with more lenient requirements and lower down payment options. Think of them like financial aid for your dream home. They can be a game-changer for those who might not qualify for a conventional mortgage. So, do your research and see if you're eligible for any of these helpful programs. You might be surprised at what's available. Navigating the world of mortgages can feel overwhelming, but remember, you don't have to do it alone. There are experts out there who can guide you every step of the way. A mortgage lender can help you find the right loan program and interest rate for your needs, while a real estate agent can help you find your dream home and negotiate the best deal. 
Think of them as your financial mentors, there to answer your questions, calm your nerves, and help you make informed decisions. Don't be afraid to ask for help, it's what they're there for. Congratulations, grads! You've reached the end of our mortgage crash course. We've covered a lot of ground, from the basics of mortgages to the different types of loans and government programs available. Now it's time to put that knowledge into action and start your home ownership journey. Remember, buying a home is a big decision, but it's also an incredibly rewarding one. It's about building a future for yourself, creating a space that's uniquely yours, and achieving that ultimate adulting goal. So what are you waiting for? Start by checking your credit score, saving for a down payment, and researching different mortgage options. And don't forget to reach out to those helpful experts we talked about. You got this.